You know, I don't know why they don't use garlic as one of the key medications for the heart. Well, actually I do. There's really no money in it. So today I'm going to show you something very simple and expensive, garlic water. Garlic has shown similar effects in lowering blood pressure to standard blood pressure lowering medication. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of what garlic can do for the heart. Okay, it's antiviral. Most colds are virus in nature. So at the first sign of a cold, you should be consuming garlic. Antifungal. Now, if you have a candida infection or your tongue is like has a white film on it, garlic is the answer for that. And when people take antibiotics, they end up with a candida infection because the bacteria was supposed to keep this candida in check. And without that, it can overgrow. Garlic is also antibacteria. You can take it as a natural antibiotic. It's good for TB and even AIDS pylori, which is one of the causes of ulcers. Garlic is good as an antiparasitic. It kills worms and parasites. Garlic is also powerful simply by lowering insulin and improving insulin resistance, which not just help your blood sugars, but they help reduce things like a fatty liver, which comes from excessive amounts of insulin. So garlic's powerful anti-cancer effects. Garlic helps arthritis, any type of itis, because it has powerful anti-inflammatory effects. So anything like bursitis, tendonitis, arthritis, garlic can also increase endurance if you're an athlete. But today I'm going to kind of focus in on the heart primarily. There's over 43 clinical trials that show remarkable benefits of using garlic on the cardiovascular system. Decreased relative risk of heart attacks and stroke over 50%. So why would anyone not be including garlic in their diet on a regular basis? So check this out. There's a compound called thromboxane, and I don't want to get into the chemistry of it, but this compound causes platelets to clump, forming clots, okay, which then can get lodged in the heart vessels, creating a heart attack, or it can pass through the arteries up into the brain, potentially causing a stroke. This compound causes vasoconstriction, okay? And what we're talking about is a spasm of your coronary artery. There's something called unstable angina. Okay? The unstable angina is related to a coronary artery spasm. Uh, vasospastic. So the arteries actually go into this, this constriction. Okay. And in this type of angina, you usually have unstable plaque that can break off and then get stuck in other parts of your vascular system, causing a stroke or a heart attack. So sometimes it can last for 10 minutes and it goes away and it comes back. But this is the type of angina that can occur at rest in the middle of the night. Whereas the stable angina has a plaque that has a fibrous cap. It's more protected, but can break off triggered by certain activity, either some injury, maybe exercise, or something that can break off this plaque, then causing the angina. Now there's various risk factors for angina. You have smoking, of course, and nicotine, obesity. Then you have diabetes where you have an insulin problem and the arteries are very, very uh, stiff. Uh, high blood pressure could be a risk factor. Stress can be a trigger. Insulin resistance, which then will cause the inflammation inside the arteries. Then you have this cascade effect of your body trying to form a Band-Aid out of cholesterol, calcium, and protein. Alcohol is one cause. Marijuana can be a trigger. Cocaine can be a trigger. And energy drinks. Potent hypertension. Okay, when this is too high, you get high blood pressure. And this chemical compound in your body occurs after injury and inflammation. Garlic has several compounds that act as a natural inhibitor to this compound and without the side effects, okay? Olive oil also can inhibit this compound as well. So when we're talking about the effects of garlic on heart attack and stroke, we're talking about making sure that you don't develop clots, Garlic has natural properties to lower blood pressure, reduce artery stiffness, probably because it lowers insulin, and it can help lower your calcium score. There's a really good test that is probably one of the best predictors of heart attacks, and it's a coronary artery calcification test. It should be zero. 
if it's greater than 400 or 500 or even over 1,000, that actually can predict your chances of getting a heart attack. So it's a very, very good test to get done. But guess what? Garlic can help lower the calcium. And this garlic also can help balance out your lipids and cholesterol, as well as help you produce more bile. Now, since garlic is very antimicrobial because it works on viruses, funguses, and bacteria, it can greatly help another thing related to the heart called infective endocarditis. There's actually an infection with staph bacteria that's occurring right inside the arteries. So let's summarize. Garlic can help thin the blood so you don't develop a clot. It's antimicrobial if there's an infection. It helps to mobilize excess cholesterol and other lipids from your arteries because it can increase bile production. It can help regulate the pressure and counter this vasoconstriction going on. It can help soften the arteries and remove any excess calcium. All right, now let's show you how to make this very, very difficult and complex garlic water. Garlic water, you crush one clove of garlic, okay? You put it in some water, eight to 12 ounces of water. You add a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. You let this sit for about 15 minutes because we want all these phytonutrients to be released from the garlic after you crush it. And also we're putting the extra virgin olive oil in there, not just to help you reduce that compound we just talked about, but to also help the absorption of some of these phytonutrients since they're fat soluble. Just make sure your garlic doesn't come from China because they sometimes grow with chlorinated chemicals and sometimes they use sewage as their fertilizer. So get it locally or better yet, grow it yourself.